This is unit 3H. It deals with weight, height and various forms of energy. Now if we start at the bottom here as we usually do we have force, energy and distance that combine in this formula that we've seen before. Now the physics isn't really any different it's just a particular example of this formula. The type of energy we're interested in is gravitational potential energy the force we're dealing with is weight and the distance is height which is just an upwards distance. So weight is composed of two things or it's determined by two things the mass of an object and the strength of the gravitational field in which it finds itself. So that gives us this formula GPE gravitational potential energy is mass times gravitational field strength times the height. And we're going to have a look in three scenarios here how each of these factors on the right hand side influence how much energy we have. So if we increase the mass fairly straightforwardly, if we keep everything else the same, the, and that's what this little bar means, it stays the same, so same gravitational strength, same height, we're going to get more energy for the more massive object. So we can see a much bigger one here. Obviously they're both zero when the height is zero, but we can see them both increasing but this one on the right with greater mass increases more. Harder to demonstrate in the lab is changing gravitational field but if we could go to the moon and then to the earth kept everything else the same, the mass and the height we'd have a similar effect. The greater strength of the earth means it would require more energy to lift the same mass to the same height and again we can see the GPE rising there. Finally we've got the effect of height this is also fairly commonsensical the higher you lift something the more energy it will require to do that and the more energy therefore you will store in your object. Now here we've got uh, some fairly complicated arithmetic, some fairly complicated algebra. Um, you wouldn't be expected to repeat this in the exam but the conclusion is important so let's just go through it reasonably quickly. When we have a interchange between gravitational potential and we let something drop we get kinetic energy so that's the formula for kinetic energy so if we know the GPE we can work out the KE at the bottom if we do a bit of rearranging we cancel out the M's we divide both sides by M that's what this red line is all about a process we do to both sides and the laws of algebra allow us to do that we get GH equals half V squared and if we want to get rid of the half we multiply both sides by 2 we get this expression here so then we're left with the squared, so if we square root, which is the opposite of, of something being squared, we end up with velocity is the square root of 2gh. And notice mass uh, doesn't come into that as long as we ignore air resistance. Now how does this work in a couple of examples? Well, here we've got a bouncy ball, a very, very good bouncy ball, I should add, dropping. Uh, so it starts with lots of GPE and it turns into progressively turns into Ke so let's follow as it goes down here we've got our graph so the the GPE goes down and the Ke goes up there'll be a moment when they'll uh, cross each other and the situation reverses when it bounces back up so it's not very realistic we would lose some of the energy in the bounce but let's imagine it's a perfect ball and this is the relationship we'd have so we've got uh, gravitational potential energy turning into kinetic energy now here we have a slightly more complicated variation in that when the object reaches terminal velocity the kinetic energy can't increase but energy has to go somewhere it can't be created or destroyed where does it go well strangely enough it actually heats up the air slightly so we have to have a third line here which is heat we can see this is the uh, this dotted line here is the point where terminal velocity is reached so from then on there can't be a increase in Ke, we get a little bit of increase in heat before that, but after that all the GPE is uh, turned into heat, so you're slightly warming the atmosphere. So there we have it, we have a, an exchange and an interchange between different forms of energy. The key idea as always is energy, energy cannot be created or destroyed.